Mm-hmm. Let's see, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Simon Peter, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I like how he says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. I like that. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And we kind of discussed last week a little bit that the all things there is the Greek word autos, the baffling wind, which means his spirit. He's given us his spirit. It's the only way that you can learn these masteries. It's the only way that you can allow yourself to be changed by the word is with his spirit. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And that word lust there simply means um, wanting to do it your way which is pretty much forbidden. Because God says, do it my way and you'll be blessed. You know, do it my way and you'll prosper. You do it your way, I'm just going to have to sit by and watch you fail. And we don't like failure. (laughs) We like success. And I like here in verse 4 at the top where it says three things. Exceeding, great, and precious. And this is what he's calling these promises. They're exceeding, they're great, and they're precious. So then we get down to verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, before I get into those words, I want to go to Proverbs 1, if I don't pull the tab out here. Proverbs 1 and verse 33, it says, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with what we just read? Well, it's a promise. If we listen to him and abide by his word, then we're going to be safe from all evil. That's a promise. And we'll have a peace about it, because it says, and shall be quiet. We'll have peace. If we go over to uh, John 14, uh, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So, This is another promise of peace. Okay? If we go over to Romans, we'll we'll go to Romans 6 first. Romans 6, verse 10. No, wait. Romans, oh yeah, 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So here's another gift, gift of eternal life. Because it's only through him, through Jesus Christ, that we have life. If we go over to Romans 10, verse 9, 
it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved so here's another promise of salvation now I kind of took a, a look at it and found that there's literally over 3,000 promises throughout the Bible that's way too many to sit there and name and count and well we counted them but to name them and then discuss each and every one of them it's a lot of promises but 3,000 I thought that's kind of kind of significant there because wasn't on the on the day of Pentecost 3,000 souls came to know the Lord so I thought that was kind of interesting and uh, you know we can claim all these promises and a lot of these promises possibly might be masteries now they're gifts to us from him but you know when somebody gives you something you can either do something with it or just set it off to the side and let it collect dust I don't like doing that especially if somebody gives me something useful you know and maybe somebody gave me something that wasn't quite useful but I can turn it into something that's useful or possibly give it to somebody else that could actually use it I don't know but to not just let it sit there so now I want to go back to second Peter and we'll uh, talk about some of these words here now it started out here in verse 5 it says uh, this chord and besides this giving all diligence add to add to your faith so faith we know is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen right so many people they got to see something or they got to feel something or they got to have some kind of sign or something but Jesus told his disciples hey it's better that you believe and not see than to see and believe because it's by faith you know I don't operate the way man operates I don't do the five senses use that sixth sense if you want to really get into it that spirit you know that affects all the five and more so the first one here we have is virtue and that was kind of on last week's uh, on, on how we're to think the masteries on how to think the virtue so that was goodness and moral excellence and also righteousness now remember he gives us these gifts these promises these masteries but it's up to us working with his spirit to master them or to get better practice makes better the second one here is knowledge and knowledge is the act of knowing but you're like well how do you know well he said study to show thyself approved so you'll know he says if you don't know you ask ask and it shall be given you'll shall you'll receive it if you're asking for knowledge or understanding of his word he'll give it to you in one way or another it may not come overnight but as long as you keep you know pushing him for it he'll give you the the answer you're looking for another thing about the knowledge here it says knowing what is required of you in his word but the only way you learn that is to study you can read his word and that's good but you need to study a little bit study to show thyself approved and that word approved there doesn't mean approved to the people of the body of Christ or even to yourself it's approved to him so he's you know you can say father I've you know I've studied this thing I've, I've looked at it every way possible am I missing anything let him lead and guide you there I mean he gives us some of the tools to, to use but sometimes there's something else about it he wants us to learn and like I said might have to go around a mountain a couple times some of us uh, you know think we can take a Mack truck and go through it but it doesn't work that way 
I've had to go around mountains so many times, and sometimes I just had to stand there and look at them going, really? You know, I thought I'd just climb this thing, and I did. But there's something else about that subject or whatever it was he wants me to learn, something else, something new, something I missed. So now we go on to the third one, which is temperance, which basically means self-control. And that could be self-control with many things. See, you know, people, well, I don't drink. Good. That's self-control. I don't smoke. I don't curse. I don't do this. I don't do that. Self-control. There's different types of self-control, but it's still self-control. It's temperance. And that's not something you acquire overnight. It's a mastery. You learn self-control. We didn't just stop doing, you know, habits out of the clear blue. We didn't. I didn't. But he pretty much will wean you off that thing or whatever it is you're doing and say, that's not as important as you think it is. I have something more important for you, something for you to focus on, concentrate on, you know. Change your, change your focus, your direction. The fourth one here we got is, uh-oh, patience. Patience for a lot of people. So I looked it up. It means to endure. It also means to bear trials. But it also means cheerfulness. And uh, you're like, well, going through hard things doesn't make you happy. Well, it's not supposed to. But you have a knowledge, a knowing about the thing. So that should make you more cheerful as going into something unknown. Like, I don't know what's going on. But you do. Because he's giving you some information. He's, he's, you've been reading his words, studying. He's testing it. There's going to be some cheerfulness in there because you're not going in blind. The fifth one here is godliness. And I was like, well, how could you define godliness, you know? And it says, uh, to announce good, the gospel to think well of. I was like, okay, to announce good. Well, that's what they do when somebody ever ministers or gives a word, whether it's in church or on the street or wherever it is, you're delivering good news, and that's a form of godliness, another mastery. We get into the sixth one here, brotherly kindness. Now, my dad asked a question once. He said, how do you know when you've passed from death unto life? And uh, I don't know if anybody gave an answer on that, but he says, when you have a love for the brethren, when you have a love for God's creation, instead of hating it, and now you love it, and it's talking about not just the earth, but the people in it. Because people rub you the wrong way. They just do. They just do. So it says, love of the brethren, affection towards mankind, brotherly love. It's not something that you're accustomed to. We learn to do that with his spirit as we develop in his nature. And the seventh one here, charity. Of course, we know that charity is love. It's actually the word agape. Uh, to love in a social or moral sense. And it, then it said love feast. And I was thinking, well, that kind of sounds like the marriage supper of the Lamb right there. A love feast. You know, he's calling everybody to the table. Come one, come all. I've got nothing but good food to eat. There's plenty to drink. You won't be hungry or thirst. All your needs can be met, you know. And that invitation is still open right now. He's like, come on, come on. Hands open. So, it says, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall ne neither be barren. And I thought, well, I wonder if that word barren means anything. I looked up, it says unemployed. <laughs> it says they, they, they won't make you unemployed or lazy, useless. You'll, you'll, have something, you'll have something to do. You're working on these masteries. You have something to do. You're not, you're not being lazy about it because every day is a chance to work with him. The 
let's get that on tape so there's no tape. I'm still stuck in the past. <laughs> I just said that uh, the NIV um, refers to it as you become effective instead of ineffective and productive instead of unproductive. Yeah, that sounds, sounds good too. I want to be productive, not unproductive. I want to be able to help somebody, not hurt them or not be able to give them anything. Uh, or unfruitful. And we know that the fruitfulness is just what he's developing in us. You know, the fruit on the trees, where the trees of righteousness. Uh, it says, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that word knowledge there, it's acknowledgement. It's full discernment of who you are and who he is. That's the knowledge, who you are and who he is, what he's doing. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence, you know, take care, to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Well, that's pretty cool. Because I don't like falling. I don't like making mistakes, messing up, because sometimes you mess up so bad you don't think you can climb your way back up or you don't have the answer. So he's giving us information here that saying you can't fall. You can't fail if you do these things, practice these things, and continue doing them. But then I like what he says down here in the next verse. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I looked up that word entrance there, and it says purpose. A purpose shall be ministered unto you. He's giving us purpose. That, that takes away that barrenness. That purpose overrides that. And then he says in verse 12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. So he's saying, I don't, I'm not always going to have to remind you. But see, that's, that's how a human mind is. You constantly have to remind people, brush your teeth, take your pills, drink your milk, eat your cereal. Wash behind your ears. I mean, you know, whatever it is, it's like we always have to remind one another some of the same things we do every day, but sometimes we forget a step. So easy. And uh, in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth, which simply means the knowledge, who he is, who you are, what's going on. The development. Now, uh, those we kind of refer to seven steps to perfection, but some don't like that word, so you could say seven steps to success. You're going to be successful. Now, God's promises, because He called these promises. He says, are graciously bestowed upon his children. They are not secured by negotiations. Some people think you have to do something to get something from God. He doesn't work that way. You don't bargain with him. You don't negotiate with him. And what he does is he negotiates on behalf for you. So he's giving you this stuff for free these gifts, these promises, and he's like, please, take them, work with them. Draw an eye to me, I'll draw an eye to you. I will develop you, look unto me for, my, for help from me. It says we must learn to depend more upon his promises to us than our promise to him, whatever, whatever <laughs> promise that would be. We must dep depend on him more, and that's always been a fact. Now, I think I want to go over to Galatians for just a minute. Galatians. 
Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you're like, fulfilled in one word. And when I think of love thy neighbor as thyself, I'm thinking brotherly kindness, charity. So in that one thing, the law, or whatever is required, is fulfilled. Uh, the law just simply means the regulations and principles of the word. But in other instances, it could mean rituals, but that's not what it's referring to here. Now, five, verse twenty two, Galatians five, verse twenty two. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. And I'm going to get into those next week because those words are actually much bigger words, much bigger definitions and meanings. But here they're talking about works. The fruit would be considered works. You know, what, what is being accomplished? What are you working on? What is he working on in you, with you? So, the things from last week, because some of us weren't here, uh, how we're to think. Screwdriver for this. Back in Philippians, how we're to think, these masteries. It's whatever was true, honest, just, whatever was pure, lovely, of a good report, whatever has virtue and praise. That's how we're to think. These gives us seven steps to success. And then the first ones... was to strive lawfully to accomplish these masteries is was saying basically to do it God's way, follow the rules and regulations set forth in the Word. You have to read. You have to study. That's how you know. That's how you acquire the knowledge. And the strive just meant that you were in a contest, public games, and you were to be strong in the grace, be faithful, to endure hardness and things that please him. And some of those things were, you know, like faith pleases him, the Ten Commandments, keeping those pleases him, uh, worshiping him, uh, having the right attitude. All those things please him. And there's many things, it's like there's probably a lot you could name that pleases him. And I'm, kind, I'm actually kind of glad there's more that pleases him that d than doesn't please him. Now, he lists the things that don't please him, but the good outweighs the bad. Yeah. So, I'm happy with that. So, let's see, I had it written down somewhere else here. I think I was going to save that for the next message. Okay, that's all I had on the seven steps. Did anybody have any questions about those or anything that you think should be added to that? Well, all heads are down. <laughs> People are writing or reading. <laughs> I did talk to Grace today and asked how Gary was doing and 
what was going on and had a question for Gary. And I don't get a chance to talk to him much, so he's able to he, he's not able to come up here as much as he used to since he's always traveling now more and more. And uh, I can't talk to him over the phone very well. I have to have Grace <laughs> there with me. So So all hearts are clear on the message? Well, 